intention. One should not have an intention. How could I say that? It's impossible. We always have an intention. It's a misunderstanding. Yes. I cannot say. <coughs> not possible. So what should be the intention then? The purity in purpose. Our intention should be the purity in purpose. And there's, there's purity in purpose with a certain material attachment still, uh, like in the mode of goodness. Mm -hmm. And there's purity in purpose of focusing your mind on transcendental achievements and transcendental health. And that is the highest. consciousness. Mm -hmm. This is the highest. But we have to get there. No? It's not an automatic thing. The intention. <coughs> in our work, we are working currently, uh, we are writing a lot about intention. Because intention is, is we, 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 we distinguish between the tamaguna. Tamaguna is very selfish intention. Doesn't care for anybody's pain and pleasures as long as it's for his purpose. No? Then there's in, in Rajaguna, we call it the uh, the, uh, the intention to only think about oneself, not wanting to cause harm to others unnecessarily, but the only criteria is m I me mine, what's happening for me and giving me. And then there is the mode of good goodness, which is rather a pure intention, pure, pure purpose, but it, uh, it may be conditioned by my own wish of my own happiness. And as long as I'm concerned primarily with my own happiness, even if my happiness in that consciousness is to make others happy, which is like, very good, no? Very good. Oh, he wants to be happy by making others happy. What a nice person. So even that is uh, a much higher stage than the previously described intentions. There's still some material covering. So therefore there is the intention, the highest intention is I want to go home back to home back to God. I want to do the things my Lord and Master wants to be done and that's, that's all to it. I don't have any other needs or no other, no, no other goals along my path. You are focusing on the transcendence exclusively. Even you can do material things like in Karma Yoga or Bhakti Yoga, that you do so many things in this world, but your intention is not in this world. Those whose intention is in this world, they, they are not yet uh, understood fully what is the Bhakti path. They still think in Karma Kanda terms. So, is this confirmed that law of intention works for short? Huh? Law of intention. Love? The law, the law of intention. Like you, if you intend something, you will get it. It does that really work. Or you, you call it law of attraction? Law of attraction, law of intention. This is uh, Dr. Wayne Dyer's law of intention. Yes, 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 yes. yes. This, is, this is a little bit in the line of thinking of the intensively marketed secret. Is it? That's the, not the another one that Ryan. I'm talking about the Dr. Rain Dyer's uh, yeah. law of intention. Okay, so you're not you're not thinking not about the secrets. I'm not, not attracting the intention. Okay, the intention. Well, let's go by the shastras. We follow the Indian shastras. Radhe Radhe Mata. Radhe Radhe. Uh, the law of intention. Uh, it is an ambiguous subject because let Mataji sit yeah. there. Mm -hmm. You come over here. Cool. So the the uh, it's an ambiguous subject because certain things are hidden. Bhakti is a very hidden topic. Doctor uh, Wayne Dyer he doesn't talk much about bhakti. He is a very uh, he is a jnani is very logistics and observant and psychology and all that. And uh, he, he, 
like many of the Advaita Vedantists, he discovers many of the secrets of this functioning of the mind and so, and the repulsion and the attraction and this and that, and how it makes us suffer in this. But the, 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 the secrets of bhakti, they can only be embraced if one is very, very, very humbly praying for it. It, and that requires a certain shraddha, a certain faith that I believe there is somebody to pray to. Advaita Vedantis, they meditate, they don't pray. So what do they meditate on? On peace, on, 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 on unit, unitarian principles, on, on underlying energies, on... They, they meditate and they, they try to vibrate it inside. No? They try to come in contact with this, like with a certain idea of the emancipation, of the fusion of my individuality with this non-dual region. And that is, it's all true. We're not arguing it. Everything is true. They're great jnanis, they're great thinkers. But who do they worship? Who do they pray to? Who, they, who do they get mercy from? Do they ask for their mercy? Now bringing that back to the law of intention. Uh, mm -hmm. The intention is something which has to recognize, like in, in you may have called the, heard the expression, throwing the towel. Hmm? You do everything, karmi, jnani, yogi. I worked so hard, I got money, I tried to be happy, it didn't work. I read thousands of books, I became a doctorate, and I did this, I, I did meditations, and so and my man, mind is still in a void stage, or in an in a unhappy stage, no? it didn't work. I practiced yoga, I, I did uh, astanga yoga, I did pranayamas, I did everything in the book which is there, nasties and, and everything, I fasted for long days, uh, I, 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 I stood up on one leg and uh, went to the Himalayas and sat next to a fire, uh, and I did it all, and I'm still not happy. So. Krishna Bhakta Nishkama Ata Eva Shanti Bhukti Mukti Siddhi Kami Sakaliya Shanti. That those who are doing all these exploit, explorations, they will not have full peace of mind. And most likely they won't even get Brahma and realization. You know why? It's just too much distraction nowadays. It's not the time for that. It's not the age for Otherwise, meditation would have been recommended for us at this age, but this is the age of prayer. Crying out for mercy uh, and chanting, My Lord, without your holy name, I'm nobody, I'm nothing, I'm lost. So, I taking shelter in Ras, <coughs> taking shelter in love, taking shelter in the divinity, giving up your own control of the thing. That's why I say it's ambiguous. Because you said law of intention, but the law of intention doesn't also work into the bhakti principle. And of course it does. Because the very fact that I wish to love somebody, I live, live, wish to find somebody who is the most loving of all, this is all there's all intentions involved. So uh, actually the bhakti path, it doesn't deny anything. There was a very nice verse, uh, a nice scholar, his name was Vaman Dev, also known as Walter Eidlitz. He wrote The Unknown India. He said, when I came to India, I couldn't figure it out. Everybody contradicts himself. Everybody says, these guys are wrong, I'm right. These guys are wrong. The Karma Kandi, the Shiva Bhaktas, the Vishnu Bhaktas, everybody has a different idea. What is it all about? Which scripture to follow? What ritual to do? What? And you are there like a newcomer. You go, Surya, or what? You go to the South India, it's another thing. You go to Himalaya, it's another thing. Everywhere. You go to Bengal, it's another thing. You go to Gujarat, it's another thing. You go to Maharashtra, you go to everything. is like, what is this? And that's called Hinduism, or what is it? Mm -hmm. So, then he said, but when he came to met, meet the Vaishnavas, he said everything became clear to him. Because by the Vaishnava philosophy, it all falls into a place which harmoniously works with each other. It's according to the intentions. Mm -hmm. no? If you have the intentions for karma yoga, this way it will come to you. If you have the intention for knowledge, this way it will come to you. If you have the intentions uh, to, uh, 
to go to the heavenly planets, another thing will come to you. If you have the intentions to go to uh, Vaikuntha, another thing will come. If you have the intention to go to Ayodhya, another thing will come to you. If you are attached to Dwarkadish, then another thing will come to you. So the whole world, it does fit all together. It, it's all part of one conglomerate of wisdom, but it has secrets. And those secrets you won't be able to find out with your intention unless you have the intention to find them. And then when you have those intentions, then it must be revealed to you. It's not something you can like, one plus one is two, I got it. No. In this sense, in that world of bhakti, you have to simply say, I'll never get it. Unless I'm being picked up. That's why the, the great persons like Krishna's Kamiraj Goswamis and so, even though they were very elevated souls, they talked of themselves like, I'm the worm in a stool and all this type of stuff. Huh? So because they... they, they recognized something which most jnanis cannot understand that without grace we are hopelessly lost and without grace means there must be somebody who can give that grace that grace is not a mechanical connection where you just have to punch in the right code into the thing and the door opens it's not a code it's the love divine which can only be approached by love from our side because that love divine has invested in your heart the, the, the possibility of that love that has been invested in you and because this love is being uh, withheld from those who are working on the level of suspicion there's a nice sentence my Guru Dev used to often quote he said, suspicion leads to suspension. So when you approach the divine supreme realms with the suspicious, suspicious, knowing, analyzing mentality, you are suspended. You stay in the world of intellectuals. And that's what happens in many of these American movements, new agey stuff, all mixed max. They do all this, they get this kind of arrogance that we have reached. We are higher than the others, we, we got it. And then you get such silly movements, movies as the secret. Boy, you said the silly movie. I mean, it, and it gained so much popularity because the people are silly, you know. And then, yeah, you just focus on it. You just want money. You get money. Just keep fixing your mind on it. The money will come. And there is a par portion of a portion of truth in that also, but that's not the supreme principle of this world. It's just, it's just some of the functioning principles which, uh, which then the law of attraction, no? law of attraction, what you, what you do, what you think, that would come to you. So then everybody who is in a concentration camp, he must have be really thought a lot about concentration camps, no? So then he produced his own concentration camp, no? I mean, let them be hit over the butt, these rascals, no, for proposing such a silly thing. There is a law beyond our knowledge of laws. And that law is God. God is law. God is 